Good morning. By the way, I featured this on Instagram the other day. I thought it may some of you may find it interesting to know that we had three small sevas on our property. This is the biggest one. It's getting its leaves back right now. It just shed all of them about two weeks ago. Um, I remember when we first moved to Puerto Rico, my son used to call it the dinosaur tree because it has really big, like um, what may look like thorns, spikes. I am starting a little walk with JJ on the beach now. We are in our swimwear because sometimes we like to take like a quick dip in the water after we're finished. But other times we'll just come like in shorts and more like active wear type attire. I'm going to make some lunch and I'm gonna vlog that for you guys. So I have my little bag here, I have water. With We just have the beach, we're going to go home now, rinse, and I'm starting, I haven't had breakfast. Breakfast me siento desmaya. <laughs> going to make today guanime. Oh, yeah. The, the things that you, I boil in the banana leaf with the harina. The, more the maí than, um, than the flour, all-purpose flour, harina de trigo. So, I mean, like, I digest it better. Um, so that's probably what's going to happen. So we are headed home now. What are you making it with? With, with, with? with toilets. I have um, some beans that I made yesterday. I was trying to make it with, um, No, I changed my mind. See, I was going to make it with bacalao because that's traditionally how we eat it at home. But I decided today to make it with abichuela guisada. So I am showered, we are showered, my son is taking a nap, I'm going to finish making lunch. I kind of started yesterday, so I will insert a clip of the habichuelas guisada that I made maybe after I make the guanimes. I remember all my life eating it, the only difference is my mother didn't boil them in banana leaves, she just made the masa and threw it right in the pot of boiling water. It's a little different from my mother. And we're going to start with that and then we'll go into the clip of the habichuelas 
I'm gonna eat and end this vlog. I'm actually and dress for my hair to dry. Gonna step out later with the kids. We're like, this is a lot of times what I do. I'm going to go out right after this. I, I just put on clothes that I'm doing a thing, a whole change of outfit things. So after this, I'm going to um, put some makeup on, do my hair, and probably, I might record a little bit of that, I'm not sure. Okay, so let's go into voiceover now. I used two tablespoons of butter, four tablespoons of sugar, one 13 ounce can of coconut milk, Later we are going to add um, the dry ingredients and some more liquid. I leave a little extra on the side for adjustment but I normally use at this point one fourth cup to half a cup of vegetable stock. You can just use boiling hot water with salt for seasoning. Um, that part is pretty much up to you. Over here, better. Yeah. Here we go. So, so you can see nothing is falling out of my bowl. I have it practically upside. Think. So this is really mixed already, but sorry you don't see my face. I will you see my tripod soon. This is mixed already. But I like to really just keep running the fork through it to make sure that it's all meshing really well together. Blending and sticking. Binding. I want to make sure that there are no lumps, so I take my time here. I would say maybe 10 minutes of this over and over. Two minutes while I get my pot of water to boil and set up the banana leaves. Or you can do what my mother used to do and just throw it straight into the hot boiling water without anything. She used to just make them into balls or um, similar to the size of a surujo. This gets tiring. <laughs> so, the consistency is so thick. Have, I have a big spoon because I like to use this sort of like as a measuring spoon. I like to make sure I have the same amount in each one. Um, here are the banana leaves. They are, I would say, they're not perfect squares. Not, no two are alike in size because I sort of just ripped them. But I would say they are an average, with like maybe like a six by eight dimension about you can make these whatever size you want my scissors and my string this is the same string from the pasteles so now we're going to roll them in here tie them and boil them for 20 minutes in unsalted water this has plenty of seasoning the only thing I added to my water was a tablespoon of coconut oil
I forgot to mention, I like to use the smoother side of the banana leaf. You will see on one side it has like a little bit of um, maybe sort of ridges. Feel that one side is more smooth than the other. I use the smoother side for the inside. Also, you want to leave at least an inch on the edges so that your masa is not spilling out. I think out. we can buzz through this really fast. First thing I'm going to say, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, if your sofrito is good, none of the rest of the stuff is that important. This is just to bring your habichuelas to a next level. But growing up, honestly, most of the times, my mother just emptied a can of beans, added sofrito, added sazon, some tomato sauce, and that was it. Some papas, and we were good to go. And they tasted delicious. These little extra things are already in your sofrito, but it just, you know, if you want to just, like I said, bring it up a notch, then it's going to taste better. But if your sofrito is not good, and you're only adding sofrito to your beans, then mm -mm. You, will, you will need some help. <laughs> Along with that, I'm going to add a tablespoon of garlic powder. Again, um, it's not necessary if you just need some quick ajo y habichuela or you need a sofrito sazon beans and your um, salsa tomate I'm going to add some of this or you can add like maybe two cloves of minced garlic or garlic paste even so to start i have my pot i have to let that simmer down i have here some turkey sausage it's smoked turkey sausage but usually people if they add any kind of protein to their beans so their abitualis it is ham some might add salchicha, but we don't eat salchicha here. Um, but that, I've seen that also in beans. Some might add even pork bones. Um, but yeah, I usually just make mine with papas. But today, or sometimes I even add yuca. I add bolita de um, platano um, or the guineo of that. If you are vegan, you can add liquid smoke to your beans and it will give it that same taste. So here we go. Normally people would stir fry this with some oil, but I am almost oil free in this house. I'm just not adding oil anywhere. I don't need it and you do not need it to um, cook your beans. So here we have some diced peppers, um, orange bell pepper, some cebolla, some onion. I have two tablespoons of sofrito, three recaos, about five olives that's really just for show nobody really cares about the olives and a tablespoon of tomato paste or or you will probably add a una lata de um, tomato sauce and then we're going to just stir fry this you want all of this to cook you just want it to sort of get like a nice coating seal in those flavors get it cooked and then we will pretty much stew the beans so just wanted to show you that today instead of adding sazon because I usually make my own sazon and I run out and I have stopped buying sazon from the store a while ago um, and I just don't feel like gathering all the spices to make it so I'm just going to substitute it with some adobo and we'll be fine just a little spoon of this maybe a teaspoon and I think we will be okay there goes my little cucharita de, de adobo but like I said, it's usually sazon. Trust me. Trust me when I say you will not notice the difference. The most difference that you notice is if your sazon has coloring in it. But I add a pinch of salt. Just a pinch. And I also saw AmboricosBeLike.com on Instagram. I heard them mentioning adding um, a little bit of sugar to the beans. And I've seen that in a lot of other recipes. And I never tried it for the beans. And I think it might be interesting. We're not going to try it today. Okay, so now I added my papas. These are little fancy red potatoes. Normally, you just use like a russet potato. But this is what I have on hand. So now I added some papas. You usually cut them, I would say, like into little wedges or squares. 
Okay, so now we have a little thickness going on here. The time from stir frying um, until you add your beans and water is no more than 10 minutes. I added a can of red kidney beans. I'm going to add a can and a half of water. I'm going to just let this simmer on low to meat. I would say closer to a medium heat for about 15 minutes and everything should be nice and thick and cooked well through and delicious. It's really quick. I did cover my beans. I always cover them to cook through. The first portion is just all done uncovered but now they're going to um, cook on medium fire heat for about 15 to 20 minutes but always check come back at about 10 minutes to make sure that nothing is sticking to the bottom that they're not cooking too fast okay water you should have a thick consistency for your beans but they should still have some juice to them you want it to kind of stick to your ajo um that's how you know you have like a good caldo in your your arbitrellas the cubito de jamón to their beans that's very common it gives a lot of flavor sometimes if i have on hand i have this little bote called um better than bulang and it is like a veggie flavor and it's sort of like a bulan paste and i add a little bit of that in here it just gives it like a nice i don't know sort of marries all the little flavors together but as you can see the juice is starting to thicken up already. It has been 20 minutes already and I am not going to open this. You see how it's boiling inside? We are going to shut it up and wait about five minutes and then open the lid to check. Another option is you can just open it slightly just so that that boiling comes down and you do not get splattered. God forbid. Okay, they are ready. I transfer them to a bowl. I want to to just see what I mean about the juice. You see how it coats the spoon? This is what your juice should look like. Runny, they're not too dry. It's enough to mix well. This, I usually make these at home with um, calabaza pumpkin. But the calabaza gives it that little sweetness that maybe um, when the, the recipe that I saw, when they mentioned adding a little spoon of azúcar, I thought, oh, maybe it's like a substitute because the calabaza does give it a slight sweetness. Look, oh, so much flavor everywhere. And I'm gonna show you in another video. How we're going to we have some that we're going to start with. This is going to make about a dozen, this recipe. They are in. I'm going to add a tablespoon of coconut oil. Coconut oil. Cover, and we will be back in 20 minutes. Okay, so I have taken them out of the boiling water. I like to put them in a bowl standing up so that any of the uh, remaining water can drip out. It just makes it a little easier when you're cutting them. I tried to bring it and it just literally slipped out. Oh my gosh, this looks so good. Let's get another one. Okay. one person here trying to do this, so. Okay, it's hard. Oh my gosh, guys. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, guys. Wow, there we go. You guys understand? It just tastes so good. Mm. Oh my gosh. This feels like luxury. Tastes so delicious. Besitos, my loves. Thank you so much for watching. I'm not going to show you getting ready, etc. Don't forget to like this video right now. Go down and like. 
um, subscribe if you haven't. Subscribe, just share the video, talk about whatever, your favorite dish growing up um, in the comments down below. Let me know if you make this and if you make it differently. Let me know if you can stand food like this. <laughs> I personally love it. I know a lot of people don't like things like this, but these types of dishes are like, I don't know, they just do something for my soul. It's not just that it tastes good. They they speak to me. Especially Juca. Juca has this thing. I don't know. There's something about the flavor of Juca. You know, we have a little mini vacation coming up next week. We are staying in an Airbnb for just one night. We are visiting a pueblo um, that we've been to before, but we wanted to just take our time and really go through the, the streets and visit some of the, the main spots there. What will be happening next week? I'm excited. I'm excited for that. She's so good. I honestly don't know what tastes better, the habituelas or guanime. God bless my mother. Thank you, mommy, for teaching me how to cook, taking us, and for cooking for us all the time, not taking us to McDonald's, you know, weekly, and for always saying, I comida in casa. 